Hello everyone, welcome to KSG 3606 um, Ethics and today we are going to talk about confidentiality. Hello everyone, um, in this video we are going to talk about confidentiality. Okay, so confidentiality is one of the important or element that a psychologist or a mental health service provider should uh, be concerned or should be aware of. So, when people say that uh, I would like to uh, share a secret with you or I would like to tell you a secret. So basically people are, are trying to share something that is very deep down that uh, uh, about their thoughts or their their preference or something that they would like to uh, inform somebody about uh, an issue that they have been carrying for for some time okay so they they consider it is something very um, very unique information and they don't want to disclose it in public so this issue might be something that is related to their reputation, to whom they are. So they, they don't want to be uh, to be in public. So they would like to share like a secret to someone special. So usually what um, the practice is or what we do is we share such uh, information, such a, a restricted or... Um, a very deep down secret with our family members why do we do that because in family we trust each other there is already a bond between our family members you know we we share about uh, secret things to our our parents our our spouses our our siblings because with an understanding that uh, they will keep the secret or they will uh, respect your your dignity respect um, respect your um, your openness to share with them and since you are also family members they will try to protect you indirectly so they would not uh, let the information out or share it with anybody okay if they know that the information shared to them is something that is very uh, meaningful or something that is very important okay so the information the the, uh, the secret that's being shared or some confidential information you know the restricted information that is being shared to us are being kept or are being um, are being um, maintained well in the family because it is I said it there is a bond there is a trust in the family as well as there is duty in the family to look after one another so any information that we share with them with the hope that it doesn't really um, go out it retains in the family okay so there is an um, we have a culture in in Malaysia or anywhere so whenever people share or people tell the uh, the deep secrets or something that is uh, very very restricted information family tries to hold that okay because it will tarnish their reputation or they if there is anything that brings damage to the image of the family they don't want to reveal it so they will try to protect it and they want to try to protect the person who's sharing that so that that person doesn't get hurt so all this indirectly okay when you want to uh, share something family tries to hold that for us but what happens is um sometimes we it's not enough just to um, um to look for family members in certain cases you need some professional help okay just like um when we when we are sick okay when we are physically sick firstly we will share this information with our family members we will we in fact we will say that oh i, I feel like i'm not well for the last few weeks um, I think I'm, I'm running down a cold or I'm having running down a fever or uh, you know um, I feel like my eyesight is getting bad so usually such things are being discussed or 
uh, released, informed in the family first. But what happened next is once you need to get help with your situation, you need to bring that information out. The person has to seek out professional help. So when it goes to professional help, they have to disclose the information about themselves, about the issue that they are going through. So it's important for the um, for the individual to share the information with a professional to help them out, especially in the psychology. So when you are looking for a mental health provider, so if you are approaching it, you have to inform what is really happening so that we get the right treatment or right um, support from the practitioners, mental health practitioners. But in family, it is much easier for us to, um, to say that, oh, okay, I, I have this issue. I feel anxiety. I feel like I'm having anxiety. I'm, I feel like um, I'm going through a rough, um, a rough life. I feel like I, I'm getting into depression. So it's very easy for us to convey or to share our information with family. But what about with the professionals? Okay, so there is, there are somebody that we don't know and information that we are sharing with them is something that is very, very personal, something that is very close to you. Okay, so that makes the professionals to, um, professionals to share with the professionals something that is very uh, difficult to start with. Okay, so if we, we have problems because we don't know the professionals, but we, we need their help. We need to disclose the information to them. So um, why would this um, professionals can, uh, what, uh, and then in, the, in such cases, how come? How come we are able to convey or approach this professional um, help us, mental health uh, professionals, to help us with our issue because there is a term of confidentiality between the professionals and us, okay, as a client. So whenever that we are looking for or seeking for a help from a mental health prof uh, provider with the assumption that whatever we disclose will be kept confidential so it's like whenever even if you go with an issue your issue will not be discussed in public by the professionals so the confidentiality makes us feel comfortable creates a bit of trust for the professionals uh, on sorry on the professionals so that we can get help from them so the confidentiality is very, very important element or issue that a professional service provider should carry along their profession. Okay, so that they gain the trust, they gain the confidence of the clients to share their issue. Okay, why would this uh, confidentiality is very important? Because once... Um, we have this confidentiality, um, um, confidentiality element in the professional services. It's kind. It will be like a protector for both parties. Okay, so um, we feel that with this confidentiality explanation, confidentiality issues, we are able to see uh, how information that is being shared by the client is protected so it's not just when you go to a counts uh, a, a mental health provider you feel that whatever you say it is still on, on a safe uh, space and you are still protected it is not that just uh, you are sharing information in a social media and you know you can uh, it will be exposed to everyone so that will not be the case. So when you meet them, when there is a confidentiality bound between the client and the mental health providers, then there is more of a protection of the information shared, protection of uh, any of the materials that is being shared 
in the session with them. Um, although it is being protected, uh, also all the information being shared by the clients are protected, but we have to remember not all information that is being shared to the mental health providers, such as psychologists, counselors, psychiatrists, uh, are all confidential. There is a limit to whatever information that is being mentioned. Okay, there is a limit. Not all the information shared by the client is confidential. There are some incidences, some cases where we have to breach the confidentiality. We have to um, say that this is no more confidential. I have to take next action. So what are the situations where we say that uh, the information shared by the client is no longer confidential. What are such situations? Okay, There are about nine situations where um, information that is being shared by the, uh, uh, by the client is no more confidential. Firstly is when the client requests by themselves. So when a client requests, okay, I need this documents, I need the uh, sessions uh, document. Okay, if you notice in every um, session or every meeting that you have with your uh, psychologist or psychiatrist or a counselor or any, any mental health providers, they keep record of the sessions. They keep record of the meetings so they write down notes you know they uh, they write down what are the uh, issues they have like a case uh, summary they have a case history of a patient or of a client so that information is always kept confidential okay it's kept confidential but these documents can be can become non-confidential if the client requests for it Okay, why would a client request for their medical record or medical condition or their mental health condition? Because maybe they want to get a, a subsidy. Maybe they want to get some help from the, the government or they want to help get from uh, the mental health insurance policy. So in order to, uh, to gain um, all this flexibility in terms of um, getting some uh, subsidies or maybe claiming for insurance, so you need these records. So in such cases, we need to provide them with the information. We need to give them. Okay, we need to give them the records. So in other case is uh, if there is a court's order. So if a case goes to a court, okay, and uh, you are called in and you are asked to bring in uh, the records of the client, okay, maybe the client is the uh, is being convicted, okay, is being accused for um, um, for. Um, for, for a crime. So maybe you are asked to bring in uh, to, to give more justification about uh, the client. So they, they request for the documentation. So you, you, of your client's summary, client's case. So if that there is a court order, then you need to obey it. You have to bring in that information. So the information that your client shared with you is no more confidential because we have to bring it to the court because that can be some sort of a evidence. In third case is if there is a, a litigation against mental health providers. Let's say that this client is trying to sue you. Okay, you are the mental health practitioner, you are the psychologist and then they come and see you and there is an issue between you and your client, then they might go against you. They can bring you to the court, they can sue you at the court. So in such cases, uh, they would like to look into the uh, your case summary, your uh, the documentation, the confidential um, documentation that was um, kept in your office or whatever uh, documents that is being shared between uh, of, of the of the client okay so all that will be used to process or to <coughs> find out 
um, any litigation against this practitioners? Is there a problem? What was actually going on in the session? Or what really happened? Why does this client is actually uh, suing, uh, uh, bringing the, the practitioner to the court? So that case, you need to provide them with information to suggest what is actually going on. The fourth one is for other litigations. Okay, let's say that uh, you want to have once again uh, uh, sue somebody, you know, maybe uh, regarding a, um, a parking lot, for example. So let's say that uh, you you get get a summon from the court and then uh, but you actually park because you had this anxiety problems and you're actually getting um, treatment from um, from a psychiatrist or you you are getting a session counseling session attending counseling sessions so uh, at that day you parked because there was a uh, there was an emergency so you are having panic attacks so you had to park your car something like that so you want to have some evidences to support uh, your case or so you can actually use or request for the um, the documents okay or the confidential file between you and your client breach of law okay so this is a is also a big case okay um, a big uh, section where you cannot uh, keep an information confidential if you if in your session or in your discussion with your client you realize that they talk about uh, child abuse um, elderly abuse cases okay so if they are doing that okay if they if they are showing indication that they are abusing a child abusing somebody who is elder okay or vulnerable so you, that is a breach of law meaning that even though they are sharing with you hoping that you will keep it a secret but what they have been sharing is something that is wrong something that is against the law okay if they say that oh i have uh, murdered somebody um, and i have you know buried it in uh, in my backyard or in my kitchen i have put a cement on it so if such things are being uh, shared with you it is no more confidential because uh, murdering somebody is is against the law so you still have to disclose it to the um, uh, to the police you have to let them know of this issue but at the same time, if they, uh, again, if there is cases or any indication of um, abusing somebody, if they are in the power of whether sexually abusing, mentally, any form of um, abusers, you still have to warn the right authorities. Like uh, in case of, um, uh, in, the, in the Western, they usually have um, the child welfare or elderly welfare. So, in, in Malaysia, it's going to be like the you have to also consult the welfare department, you know, but you also have to make sure that the stories are valid. Okay, so you have to make sure that whatever they share is confidential, but if that information breaches or breaks the law, then it is no more confidential. You need to report that to the authorities. Um, same goes with dangerous clients okay so these are clients um, who will have uh, clients who have potentials to harm themselves okay so let's say that you have a client who has suicidal ideation so if they say that you know I have been watching uh, movies or I have been watching um, YouTubes to see uh, how to kill myself or have actually tried to take out a knife I've been um, tried to stand out at the roof of my house or something like that then you notice that these are um, potential clients who are at dangerous level who are very very dangerous to themselves okay so um, although they they tell these things in the hope that it is confidential but you are still obliged to inform their family members or people who are close to them or even uh, at some point to the authorities okay because uh, we would like to save their lives okay so 
the ideation so ideation will um, later on lead to um, will lead to a suicide so we would like to the moment we find out there is some um, ideations when we found out that there is some potential things that they are going to harm themselves it's very very important for us to um, inform the family members because we have to uh, inform them because they can keep an eye on them because we never know when they will react you cannot be following them 24 7 so you need to inform a person's close to them so to keep an eye on them so that they don't do anything that might take the life away okay so they have to you have to also you have the responsibility there okay and then a client who is planning for a crime okay so in case they uh, they come to you and they talk about um, watching videos of making uh, bombs and then they are planning to put a bomb in a in an event or they want to shoot somebody or they are trying to poison somebody you know when they talk about their plans how are they going to execute so they might it might sounds like oh they are just trying to um, well share about their ideas of killing and stuff like that but if the planning seems to be very thorough the planning the way that uh, you know when you investigate there is more information coming out of the crime it is no more confidential you need to inform the authorities to to make them alert to inform you cannot just simply inform the person they are going to uh, to um, to a fact okay so let's say that uh, a comes and talks to you that they plan to kill uh, miss y okay uh, a person called miss y so you cannot just directly call miss y and say hey you know this person is trying to call, kill you so stay safe no you cannot do that because again this is what they are just trying to share with you that maybe th th this plan is is not even a real plan but you need to inform the person close to the client you have to inform them and at some point slowly if you um, if the person is able to uh, let know who this this uh, the, the uh, miss y is then you can actually inform miss y about it or you can actually inform the authorities okay um sometimes they they get us like a restraining order okay restraining order meaning uh, a particular person cannot get close they cannot be uh, in a, like a 20 uh, rate in, uh, they cannot they cannot be living or staying or even getting near to you okay there's always like a restraining order so you cannot get close to a person if you breach that immediately the police will take action against you so they can actually get such protections okay so um, clients planning for a crime is not confidential you have to inform um, the families or the guardian of that particular client and in worst cases we have to inform the authorities okay the police and then uh, some in some cases what happens is uh, the per the um, the victim the, the potential victim can actually request from the court to get a restraining order so that um, this client will not go or get close to that person they will always have to stay far from that, that potential victim they cannot uh, the client cannot get close so if you get closer than a particular radius then uh, the police will can uh, take action and sometimes uh, the client who's planning the crime can go to jail okay so these are serious incidences so we have to be very very careful and if they have a life-threatening disease okay and let's say uh, for example they have um, um, H, uh, not HIV and uh, let's say like um, like COVID okay like threatening so if they were already like in stage four or five you know um, it's like you know uh, they are already struggling okay so we are not sure of the uncertainty of what is going to happen 
what is the outcome is going to be so in such a life threatening uh, disease so confidentiality might not take place because we uh, we would like to make sure that um, the person gets the, the the best out of it because uh, they are already towards the um, you know it is already like a life or death kind of a situation so they have to we have to always be caution because they have some tendency for um, a suicidal attempt uh, suicide attempts sorry and then they might you know um do things to harm themselves or maybe harm others so in such cases we have to be very uh, cautious with them as well okay and finally is also when they are towards the end of their lives and this is like um, when they are been suffering for a long time they had like a, a long time illness okay been suffering for a very long time then they also have tendencies of um, taking uh, taking their lives taking uh, taking their own lives so we have to be very careful so the suicidal rates are very high because they don't want to burden the family they don't want to burden other people so they tend to feel like okay i kind of like reject my medications because i feel like um i want i don't want to live anymore you know such things uh, i don't want to take my medications i don't want to take treatments because i feel like um i i i want to die soon in such kind of like statements we have to be very careful and that is no more confidential okay because we would like to uh, save we would like to protect every life as possible okay so in whether it is medical physical health or mental health we want the best for the client so we it is very important to uh, know the limits okay yes when we share information with professionals we have certain confidentiality level but we also have to remember that um, there is a limit to the sharing okay so these nine um, limits are very very important so usually before people start the sessions they are being informed okay before before they start uh, clients are being informed these are the uh, places these are the limits of the confidentiality okay so if you do anything um of this limit then the confidentiality doesn't hold anymore but if it is within this uh, it doesn't actually breach any of this nine issues then the information shared will be confidential